In the annals of our planet's history, where time is measured not in years but in epochs, continents have embarked on timeless dances shaped by forces beyond human comprehension. One such land, New Zealand, emerges as a geographical enigma, a testament to Earth's ceaseless evolution. From its roots in the ancient supercontinent of Gondwana to its current position astride two tectonic plates, New Zealand's geological tale is as tumultuous as it is captivating. Today we'll be discussing how New Zealand formed and how it almost became totally submerged beneath the waves of the Pacific Ocean, with it only just being saved by the relentless power of tectonic collisions and the volcanism that followed. Origins in Gondwana, 500 to 180 million years ago. New Zealand is actually pretty young from a geological perspective. It shares a similar age to the land in Eastern Australia, making it around 500 million years old. Its oldest rocks, rugged greywacke, began forming in ancient sedimentary basins. Fossils like the remains of the ancient Tuatara whispered secrets of ancestry with distant Gondwanan lands, hinting at a shared past. At this point in time, New Zealand and Zealandia were attached to Antarctica and southeastern Australia. Much of it was submerged beneath the waves though, with only sections of it outcropping. Rifting of Gondwana, 180 to 85 million years ago. As with all things, change is the only constant. Around 180 million years ago, the massive supercontinent of Gondwana began to break apart. Mantle convection and the relentless forces below Earth's crust led to rift valleys emerging, tearing the land asunder. Zealandia, a nearly submerged continental mass that cradled the beginnings of New Zealand, began its journey of separation from Antarctica. As it drifted, the vastness of the ocean claimed most of Zealandia, leaving only fragments like New Zealand defiantly above the waves. This rift worked to thin out the crust and this thinning out stretched Zealandia, plunging almost all of it beneath the salty waves of the Pacific Ocean. Subduction and Volcanism, 85 million years ago to present day. The dance of tectonic plates continued, and as Zealandia ventured further, the Pacific Plate began its descent beneath the Australian Plate. This descent and subsequent tectonic collision saved New Zealand from becoming entirely submerged, as it not only uplifted the land, but the melt from the subducting plate also led to the formation of volcanoes, which added much needed material to the near fully submerged landmass of Zealandia. The dramatic subduction events gave birth to deep oceanic trenches like the Kermadec and Hikurangi. Beneath the surface, the melting Pacific Plate birthed magma, which rose to craft volcanic arcs. The North Island's Coromandel Peninsula is today a testament to this fiery era. Orogenic activity, 25 million years ago to present. The land was not done evolving. Around 25 million years ago, the Pacific and Australian plates collided. This continent-to-continent -continent collision birthed the formidable Alpine Fault along the South Island's western edge. This fault would become the backbone of the majestic Southern Alps, rising in defiance against the sky. The Kaikoura Orogeny, another mountain-building epoch, added more drama to the landscape, sculpting both the North and South Islands. The almost submerged landmass was now thrust high above the waves, and it was at this point that the land began to take on the recognisable shape that we see today. Recent Geological Activity and Landscape Formation In more recent geological times, the Quaternary Period, which began 2.58 million years ago, saw New Zealand don the icy cloak of glaciers. These frozen rivers carved valleys into the Southern Alps, gifting the world with the breathtaking fjords of the Fjordland and the serene glacial lakes in the South Island's heart. However, the land's restlessness persisted. The North Island's central region became a hub of volcanic activity, with giants like Mount Ruapehu and Mount Tongariro standing guard over the landscape. The Taupo supervolcanic caldera is a remnant of one of history's most violent eruptions. It silently broods over its explosive past. Today, New Zealand stands as a testament to Earth's dynamic nature. Its landscape a canvas painted over millions of years by tectonic forces, volcanic fires, and icy brushes. As one traverses its terrain, every rock, mountain, and valley narrates a chapter of its epic geological saga, reminding us of the intricate ballet of forces that have shaped and continue to shape our beautiful planet. New Zealand was almost lost beneath the waves, but thankfully, the relentless march of plate tectonics saved it from a watery grave. Thanks for watching. 
Nestled in the heart of New Zealand, the Southern Alps stand as a majestic and awe-inspiring testament to the power and dynamism of our planet's geological forces. Their towering peaks, deep valleys and sprawling glaciers tell a story that spans hundreds of millions of years, a narrative woven into the very fabric of the Earth's crust. This tale, rich in dramatic transformations and colossal movements, is not just a chronicle of a mountain range, but a window into the processes that have shaped our world. From their origins in the ancient depths of a Mesozoic ocean to their current status as one of the most rapidly rising mountain ranges on Earth, the Southern Alps have undergone an extraordinary evolution. Their story is one of continental drift and tectonic collisions, of immense pressures and the birth of mountains, of ice ages and the relentless forces of erosion. So in this video, we'll take a look at the formation of the New Zealand Alps. In the depths of the Mesozoic era, when dinosaurs roamed the Earth, the region that would one day become the Southern Alps lay beneath a vast ocean. Here in this ancient marine environment, layers upon layers of sediment accumulated, forming the bedrock of Greywacke and Schist that would later give rise to the mountains. These sediments, rich in marine life, slowly compacted under the weight of the ocean, setting the stage for the dramatic events to come. As the supercontinent Gondwana began to break apart, the land that would become New Zealand started its slow drift away from the massive landmass. This drift was part of a monumental process of continental drift, a puzzle piece in the grand tapestry of plate tectonics that reshaped the Earth's surface. Fast forward to the Miocene Epoch 23 million years ago. The stage was set for the rise of the Southern Alps. The collision of the Pacific and Indo-Australian tectonic plates, each carrying their continental crust, initiated a dramatic uplift. This was a colossal event, where instead of one plate subducting beneath another, both plates pushed against each other, causing the crust to crumple and rise. The immense pressure transformed the ancient sediments into the metamorphic schist, characterized by its layered, foliated appearance. The true uplift of the Southern Alps began around 5 million years ago, marking a period of intense geological activity. The Alpine Fault, a major player in this story, became the site of significant horizontal and vertical movements. This fault, running along the western edge of the mountains, has been the catalyst for the rapid rise of the Alps, at rates of about 7 to 10 millimeters per year. Simultaneously, the forces of erosion began their relentless work. The high rainfall on the western side of the Alps, coupled with the freeze for action in the higher altitudes, led to significant erosion. Glaciers, those slow-moving rivers of ice, carved through the rising mountains, sculpting the dramatic U-shaped valleys and sharp peaks that define the Alps today. Today, the Southern Alps stands as a testament to the dynamic nature of Earth's crust. They continue to rise, shaped by the forces of tectonic activity and erosion. Glaciers, although retreating due to climate change, still mark the landscape, a reminder of the ice ages that played a crucial role in sculpting these mountains. As we reflect on the epic journey of the Southern Alps, from their ancient origins in the depths of prehistoric oceans to their current majesty, we are reminded of the enduring power and mystery of the natural world. The story of the Southern Alps is a vivid chapter in the Earth's geological history and a compelling reminder of our planet's ever-changing face. Their legacy continues to unfold, inspiring us to deepen our understanding and appreciation of the natural world. Thanks for watching. On June 10th, 1886, Mount Tarawera, a prominent volcano in New Zealand's North Island, erupted in one of the most catastrophic geological events in the country's recorded history. The catastrophic eruption not only marked New Zealand's most significant volcanic event in over 500 years, but also led to the creation of the Waimangu Volcanic Rift Valley, a unique geological and ecological wonder. Mount Tarawera is situated within the Okatana Volcanic Center, part of the larger Taupo Volcanic Zone. This zone is a highly active rhyolitic area, with several caldera systems formed over hundreds of thousands of years. Mount Tarawera itself is a rhyolitic dome complex, which began forming approximately 23,500 years ago. In the months leading up to the eruption, there were signs of increasing geothermal activity. Notably, the geyser at the top of the White Terrace experienced unusually large eruptions. We did a video on the white and pink terraces, and you can find that in the description down below. The eruption commenced in the early hours, around 2am, with a series of over 30 earthquakes. These were followed by a massive explosion, marking the beginning of a six hour long cataclysm. The eruption was characterized by Plinian and Pelian styles, with the volcanic explosivity index of five. A fish event approximately eight kilometers long opened along the mountain, starting from the Wahanga Dome. This vent extended across Mount Tarawera, with multiple fountains of lava and ash erupting simultaneously. The eruption's most intense phase occurred when the expanding rift reached Lake Rotomahana, causing a massive explosion as the lake water contacted the magma. 
The eruption's immediate impact was the formation of a 17 km long rift across Mount Tarawera and the surrounding area. This hydrothermal system encompasses Lake Rotomahana, the former site of the pink and white terraces, and is home to several unique geothermal features, including Frying Pan Lake, the world's largest hot spring, and Inferno Crater Lake, the largest geyser-like feature in the world. This rift was the surface manifestation of a basaltic dike, a significant departure from the usual rhyolitic eruptions of the area. The eruption ejected approximately 2 cubic kilometres of tephra, reshaping the landscape dramatically. The famed pink and white terraces, silica-based Sinta terrace formations, were destroyed. Lake Rotomahana expanded significantly, filling parts of the newly formed rift valley. The eruption claimed about 120 lives, making it the deadliest volcanic event in New Zealand's history. Villages near the mountain were buried under volcanic ash and mud. The loss of the pink and white terraces, a major tourist attraction, was a significant cultural and economic blow. The 1886 eruption prompted immediate geological studies, leading to new insights into the volcanic activity of the region. It was the first time a basaltic dike was identified as the cause of an eruption in an area typically known for rhyolitic activity. This discovery challenged previous understandings and highlighted the complex volcanic nature of the Taupo Volcanic Zone. Today, the 1886 eruption of Mount Tarawera is remembered as a pivotal event in New Zealand's geological and cultural history. It serves as a stark reminder of the power of nature and the need for ongoing research and understanding of volcanic systems. The event continues to be a subject of study for geologists worldwide, offering insights into volcanic behaviour and hazard management. Thanks for watching. In the geologically active North Island of New Zealand, the pink and white terraces were once a natural spectacle. Located in the Taupo Volcanic Zone, a region within the Pacific Ring of Fire, these terraces were formed by a series of intricate geological processes. The formation of the terraces was deeply intertwined with the volcanic activity characteristic of the Pacific Ring of Fire. This region is known for its frequent seismic events and volcanic eruptions, shaping the landscape over millennia. The terraces were formed by geothermal springs that contained silica-saturated near-neutral pH chloride water. Central to the terraces' formation was the hydrothermal activity beneath the surface. Rainwater percolating through the soil and rock layers reached depths where it was heated by the geothermal energy of the Earth's mantle. The area's proximity to magma chambers due to the active volcanic zone meant that the water not only heated up but also became enriched with minerals, especially silica, leached from the surrounding volcanic rock. The pink and white terrace springs were approximately 1,200 metres apart. The white terraces, located at the northeast end of Lake Rotomahana, faced west to northwest. They descended about 25 metres to the lake edge. The pink terraces, on the other hand, were situated on the western shore of the lake, facing east to southeast. Their pink coloration, akin to that of a rainbow trout, resulted from antimony and arsenic sulphides, and they also contained significant amounts of gold. The hydrothermal system powering the terraces was possibly up to 7,000 years old, although the terraces themselves were thought to be around 1,000 years old. The silica precipitation formed pools and steps, creating attractive swimming places. The process included the formation of lips on the terraces that trapped descending flow, as well as the formation of silica steps on surfaces where the thermal layers sloped away from the geysers. As this superheated silica-rich water resurfaced, it encountered cooler temperatures, leading to the silica precipitating out of the water. Over hundreds of years, this process resulted in the accumulation of silica in distinct terrace formations. The white terraces, extensive and prominent, were primarily composed of pure silica, giving them a striking white appearance. The pink terraces, smaller but equally impressive, had their unique coloration likely due to trace minerals or microbial life affecting the silica's appearance. The shape and structure of the terraces were also influenced by the cooling water and its temperature. The rate at which the water flowed over the area and its cooling rate affected how the silica was deposited. This created the terraces' stair-like structure, with each step representing a different phase of silica deposition. The natural basins and pools that formed within the terraces were a result of the erosive force of water and the varying rates of deposition. In 1886, the inherent volcanic instability of the region led to a catastrophic event. Mount Tarawera erupted one of the largest volcanic events in New Zealand's history. This eruption had far-reaching effects on the landscape, including the burial of the pink and white terraces under volcanic ash and debris. The eruption reshaped the topography of the area, including the enlargement of Lake Rotomahana, which covered the original site of the terraces. This eruption created a crater over 100 metres deep, which eventually filled with water to form the new Lake Rotomahana. The rediscovery efforts in the 21st century involving sophisticated mapping techniques led to the reported finding of parts of the terraces under the lake. 
However, these claims have been met with skepticism and debate among researchers. Post-eruption, the terraces were considered lost, with their grandeur surviving only in paintings and early photographs. However, their story remains a critical part of New Zealand's geological history, illustrating the dynamic and ever-changing nature of the planet's surface. As of 2023, the exact fate and location of the pink and white terraces continue to be a subject of research and debate. The story of these terraces, from their formation to their presumed destruction and the ongoing quest to rediscover them, remains a significant chapter in New Zealand's geological and cultural history. Thanks for watching.